problem is y'all want women that see the world like y'all. Any woman that's gonna value you based on social economics, you're gonna get divorced from. That is not the woman you want. If she's not looking at you for your character, for the type of person that you are, don't mess with her. If she thinks that she's supposed to marry you because you got a good job, because you can provide a good, uh, a good, uh, uh, you got a good income and you can provide a stable home, if that's her view of you, don't mess with her, man. Because what happens when her need for those things go away? She walks. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it's true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Okay, my brothers, I'm today. You see, I got my kufi on, so I'm going to come strictly in peace. Salam alaikum. Peace and blessings. You know, however you say it to yourself, shalom. Uh, but today I want to talk about marriage statistics and how reliable are they? Or shall I say, how relevant are they? How, how important are they to you and you making your decisions? You know, you hear a lot of dudes talk about how 50% of all marriages end in divorce. That's true, but it's 50% of all first marriages in the divorce. And they say 60% of all second marriages in the, in the divorce and 75% of all third marriages in, in divorce. But I want you to think about this. Let's say 2 million people get married. According to their statistics, 1 million going to make it, 1 million will be divorced. But what the statistics don't show you is how old these people are when they get married the first time. The reasons why they get married, you know what I'm saying? All of the different belief systems that people are under that tell them they need to be married or should be married, puppy love feelings, you know what I'm saying? Infatuation, you know, things like this here. And, and, and they don't tell you that if you get married really young and you and that person are not traveling in the same direction, y'all will grow apart. I don't care what you say. You can try to blame the women for it. You can try to blame the men for it. It doesn't matter. If you get married at a real young age and you and that person are not traveling in the same direction, y'all will grow apart. Point blank, period. You know what I'm saying? So let's say, okay, you got 2 million people married. I can guarantee you that a large chunk of those that get divorced are young. I can also guarantee you that a large chunk of those that get divorced are, 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 are going to be those that pursuing a, a social economics, those that have more worldly things in mind, those that are more interested in social economics. A large chunk of them are going to get divorced because they have more excuses to get divorced. You know, believe it or not, the more beliefs you have, the more luggage you carry. And the more luggage you carry, the more boxes that you're in, the more reasons that you'll have to clash with somebody. And these kinds of people, these highly uh, uh, invested uh, social economic type people, they typically cannot stay together alone. They get divorced a lot. A lot of them brothers are single and a lot of those women are single, chronically single. So, but let's say 2 million people get married. 1 million will get divorced. 1 million will stay married. So in the end, the point is in the end, 79% of the original 2 million people end up in long-term marriages. What are you afraid of? I'm going to say it again. In the end, 79% of the original 2 million people end up in long-term marriages. So all this stuff, about 50% of the marriages end in divorce, that may be true, but there's a, there's a whole plethora of reasons why that is so. And it's not always the reasons y'all think. It, it, a lot of this has to do with just the way society molds us. There's a reason why divorces are, 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 are more uh, prevalent today than they were at other times in history because people just think differently today. And that's, that, that's just the way it is. You can be mad about it all you want. It's the way it is. But in the end, my point is, what they don't tell you is that when it all boils down, when it all comes down, 79%, almost 80% of the people will find a long-term mate. What are you afraid of? 
Now, I just want you to think about that. I just want you to think about that. Don't be afraid. Don't listen to these marriage statistics because they don't tell the whole story. Statistics never tell the whole, sto whole story. They always nitpick information and give pieces here and pieces there. They never give you the whole story. So don't worry about what they say. If you find somebody you want to give a chance at marriage to with, with, you do that. But now, brothers, here's the thing. Protect yourself. I actually have legal packages on how to create uh, uh, extra systemic marriages, right? In other words, a legal, a binding type marriage outside of the system where you create your own contractual agreements, you know what I'm saying? That, that will be binding in court in case you divorce. This is the concept of the prenuptial and the, and, and the uh, postnuptial, actually. That's what, that's what they are. A lot of people don't even know they have postnuptials. Yes, they have postnuptials. You have prenuptials and postnuptials. You know what I'm saying? You have a contract that kicks in after marriage, and you have a contract that kicks in before marriage. You know what I'm saying? But my point is, you can create your own contractual agreements to protect you if anything go wrong. The problem is, y'all don't get good counseling, and y'all don't get good representation. Y'all don't have good advice. All these men's spaces online, none of them tell you what you need to hear. It's not having a, a, a bad taste in your mouth about women in marriage that you need, to, that, 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 that is the answer. Because too many of y'all want to be married, which is odd to me to begin with, because as far as I know, men never really wanted to be married. We wanted to just have women. If we could have buku women, we was cool. Y'all want to be married. So if you want to be married, then you need to learn how to create your own contractual agreements to protect yourself in the case of a divorce. I actually provide that service still, you know what I'm saying? I haven't done it in years, but I mean, I could reboot the service, you know? I used to do that at one time. I had a, I had a legal consulting company. I don't know if I told y'all that. Back then, I was mainly dealing with like uh, foreclosures and stuff like this, you know, cases like that. I didn't get a whole lot of marriage cases, but I did do some nuptials. I did do a few nuptials. So I can reboot that service. But that's what you need to focus on. How to protect yourself in case of divorce instead of being, instead of having this antagoni antagonistic view of, of marriage and women in general. Because in the end, most people find a long lasting mate. Now remember, you got 80%, in the end, 80% find a mate. And you talk about third marriage, a lot of times these third marriages occur before somebody's 35 years old. That's another thing they're not telling you. And a lot of times they already got their kids and now the person they meet later in life that's their travel meet that they stay with until they die. I mean, it just is what it is. You know, if, if, if you're looking for to find your travel mate young, then you just need to pick better. You need to, you need to be a little more cerebral when it comes to deciding what type of woman you want in your life. You need to understand that better. And the problem is y'all want women that see the world like y'all. Any woman that's going to value you based on social economics, you're going to get divorced from. That is not the woman you want. If she's not looking at you for your character, for the type of person that you are, don't mess with her. If she thinks that she's supposed to marry you because you got a good job, because you could provide a good, uh, a, a good, uh, uh, you got a good income and you could provide a stable home. If that's her view of you, don't mess with her, man. Because what happens when her need for those things go away? She walks. But if she likes you for you, that don't go away, brothers. I'm, I'm dropping science here on y'all, man. I'm schooling y'all. Y'all just not hearing. I'm schooling y'all. If she likes you for you, that don't go away. If she likes you for anything else, those needs will pass. She's not going to need you in that capacity forever. But she can want you forever. That's the difference. That's the difference. And also, in the social economic capacity, there's always another guy out there that can outdo you. There's always another brother that's doing it a little bit better than you, social economically. And he might actually look a little better than you physically. There's always somebody that can one up you like that. But when she likes you, nobody can one up that. Nobody. If she chooses you, she chooses you. It don't matter how good another man looks. His, his, his penis can poke out through his pants down to his knee. It's not going to matter. If she chooses you, she's going to choose you. So that's the key. Don't worry about the marriage statistics, man. If you want to be married, get married. You know, truth of the matter is marriages do work. And I see nothing but couples all the time. People that value being in long-term serious relationships, they even, even if one don't work, they're going to find another one. It's just what it is. They're going to find one. If if them and a certain person fall apart or grow apart, they're just going to find another. It's just a lot of times men take such a beating 
emotionally from divorce that we don't recover. And we shouldn't be that way, man. If we have a little more understanding of human nature, it wouldn't bother us as much, you know what I'm saying? Particularly if you marry based on uh, transactional, right? If your marriage is transactional or social economic, then, you know, that's not guaranteed no way. Nothing is guaranteed, but that's almost guaranteed to fail at some point. So anyway, don't worry about the marriage statistics. Don't worry about all that stuff they say out there because in the end, the people who like to be married, they're going to be married. They're going to find somebody and they're going to be married. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, it's, just a, it's a journey. You know what I'm saying? The person that you start with might not be the person that you end with. It's just, that's just the reality of life, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the women I started with, a lot of them are not here anymore. You know what I'm saying? I just got one. And she's not even the one I originally started with. I'm talking about my first baby mama. You know what I'm saying? And my first two baby mamas actually got two of my kids. Actually, two of my kids by two different women. They actually like born three months apart. And you know, but I had deep relationships with all with, with both of these women. But they're not in my life anymore. You know what I'm saying? So the, so the woman that you start with may not be the woman that you finish with. But you're going to finish. I'm still in a relationship 26 years later. You know what I'm saying? I mean... It, it be like that. So don't worry about statistics. Don't worry about what they say. If you want to be married, go ahead and get married, but do it smartly and learn about creating nuptials to protect you in court. You don't have to get married within the system, but you do want to create your own contractual agreement for entering into that union because y'all are making a promise to each other. That's what it is. Y'all, y'all, y'all are y'all exchanging vows, which is a promise. So if you go that far to exchange vows and make promises, then you need nuptials. You need a contract in place because that's what vows are. They are contract. So you need to have something written and you sign it. Actually, you do sign every marriage. Huh? You did there is stuff to sign when you get married. So you need to make your own nuptials and you sign it. Instead of being under the default setting of a state, you need to be under your own contractual agreement. So in the future, I will be doing more of these types of videos. I know they're not entertaining. I know it's more information, but I will be doing more of these kinds of videos for the brothers out there that are curious for this type of information. I hope sooner or later YouTube algorithm kicks in and start putting my videos in front of people so they can see the information that I provide. So anyway, until then, you know, check me out in the next video. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm out of here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha. Salam. So